Today, I'm gonna show you an easy way to take any image you have and make a keychain out of it. If you're not into keychains, that's okay too. There's a couple other uses for this tool that you may not have thought of. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. I'm here in the Edge of Tech studios, proudly powered by STL Flix. I don't know if you know this, but they're like the Netflix of 3D printing. They release over 80 new models a month. There's a discount link in the description below if you wanna check them out. Let's start making our keychain by going to the Bamboo Lab Maker World. There's a link in the description below that'll take you straight there. Once you're in the Maker World, make sure you're in the Maker Lab part of Maker World and you'll see a whole bunch of modules. We wanna scroll down those modules and click Start on the Image to Keychain module. Once you click Start, it will take you into the main page and here you'll see anything you've already worked on if you have, and you won't see anything in there if this is your very first time. Click on the Create from Blank button, and that will take you to the screen where we will upload the picture or image that you're gonna use for your keychain. You wanna click on the Browse File button next and choose the picture that you're gonna use. That will open up the picture and allow you to choose the layout you want, the size and shape if you wanna make it a different shape, and you can adjust the image with all of the settings in there. I'm gonna leave this one default and just click the confirm button. That's gonna begin processing the image and it's gonna take us to the next screen. From here, you can see that it wants us to choose how many colors we're going to use. It's assuming that you have an AMS or multiple AMSs together. So in this case, I only have one AMS on the printer I'll be using to print this, so I'm gonna choose four colors. If you have two or three AMS units together, you can use the four or 12 color options, and that'll give you many more options of colors to layer and make the keychain look a lot better. In this case, again, I'm gonna choose four and hit confirm. This now opens up the full editor and allows us to do a bunch of different things. In the middle, we can see the picture, and it's broken up into many different boxes. You can see that if you click on any of the different parts of the image, it'll show you the box on the image. On the right side, you can see the four colors chosen for us automatically. And if you click any of those colors, it'll actually select the parts of the image that are going to be that color. If you wanna change any of those colors, you can just do that by clicking the color and choosing a new one. This allows you to dial in the coloring that you wanna use for your picture. I'm actually gonna change the colors, so I only have one blue, and I'm also gonna add a black. So I will click any that say the number eight on them and choose the color number six, because that's what I wanna use. This will make them all one color blue. Then I'm gonna to go to the top and change the number two color to black. That's now gonna give me a white, black, and blue keychain. Once you have your colors dialed in on your picture, we can go over and take a look at the plate and thickness tab. The first option we can change is how the keychain will print on the plate. The default will give you an outline if everything is attached. Then there is the option to choose a single shape behind your picture, and you can change the size and thickness and color of the plate. So in my case, I'm gonna use a black back plate because it's all the words of my logo here and none of them are connected. So I choose the back plate and I'm gonna choose the color there. You can also choose to print this double-sided as a plate, so it'll show the same thing on both sides, which is pretty cool. You can also choose double-sided so that it's, uh, if you have a standalone image, so it doesn't need that plate, it'll actually print it on both sides as well without that back plate. You also can do a mirrored option, which is one image on one side and it's mirrored on the other side, so it looks correct either way you look at it if you turn the keychain around. That's a pretty cool thing too. Like I said, I'm gonna use the simple shape for this one and choose a black background. There's also a face down mode if you wanna print the image face down on the plate. So if you want a fancy texture or you have a special sparkly plate or you just like the uh, textured or smooth version of you know whatever keychain you're doing, you can actually print it face down. If you do that, it's going to mirror the print because then when you peel it up, it'll actually look at you. So if you put it in your slicer and it looks mirrored, that's okay if you chose the face down mode. The next thing we wanna do is actually turn this thing into a keychain. You can do that by clicking the attachment option and choosing either a hook, as you see here, and if you don't like the little hook, the tab that it adds, you can just put a hole in the print as well. You can change the size of that hole and move it around wherever you want on your image, and that just gives you a direct hole right into the keychain and you don't have to use the little tab. If you wanna use the picture for something other than a keychain, this is another option. We can choose the bookmark attachment and turn any picture you want into a bookmark. 
This is great for gift ideas for the reader in your family, or if you like books as well, you can take any picture you want, maybe it's an image from the book or the title or whatever you want, and turn it into a bookmark to put it right inside your book. You'll just place the bookmark attachment anywhere you want on that image and move on to the next step. It's, it's really that easy. In my case, for this keychain, I'm just gonna drop a hole in the top of the keychain and keep going. This brings us to the contour option, which adds a small border around your image. If you turn off the background, you can see the border that it puts around that image. In my case, I'm not gonna do that, but if I was doing a character or a picture or something like that that was all attached, unlike the letters in this one, I really like that option. It gives it a really cool border and it looks really fun. The last thing I wanna show you here is how to see the thickness of the print. If you go down to the bottom right and expand the little image down there, it'll show you the image as it's like in a slicer. So you can move it around and turn it and all that good stuff. If you go up and change the size of the thickness to say five, you can see on that slicer image, it gets very thick. In my case, I'm gonna keep this at one, but you might wanna use this if you want a slightly thicker keychain, maybe it's less bendable or breakable, that kind of thing. Once you're happy with your picture, you can just download it at the top right. I'm gonna download it as a 3MF file, which will give me all the information I need right for Bamboo Studio. Now I have Bamboo Studio opened and I went to the new project button. Then I'm gonna go choose the model we just downloaded to put it in the slicer. It's now added to the bed and I can change the printer I'm gonna to use to my X1 Carbon because for this print, I'm gonna use my X1 Carbon. Everything else should be all set and you can just choose the slice button. If you wanna do any tinkering with settings, uh, changes, anything like that, that's totally up to you, but it should really be good to go. Once it's sliced, we can send it to the printer. But before we do that, we wanna make sure that we select the correct AMS slot for the colors that we're using. You can do that by clicking the little button under the color and choosing the slot where the color will actually be in. Just make sure you actually put the colors in the slots that you choose, or this ain't gonna work. Once that's done, you can send it straight to the printer. Just a quick note, if you already have the correct colors in the slots, say you're using black, uh, blue, gray, and white like I am here, then all you have to do is match the colors that come up to the slot. In this case, I had to do that a couple times and just make sure that it's choosing the right slot for the color that it's showing. And again, make sure you put the right colors in the slots that you choose or you're gonna have a big mix up. <laughs> Trust me, I know because this one came out wrong because I forgot to choose the colors correctly. <laughs> I need to jump in right away and let you know that this video is sponsored by PCBWay. Of course they do custom PCBs, but did you know that they do CNCing and 3D printing as well? You might have remembered that recently I had them create a full custom SLS printed Nylon 12 Death Racer. Not only was it dimensionally accurate, the parts fit super strong and tight together, but I actually won the main event because it was so strong. So if you're looking for a part, or even a whole project to be created, check out my link in the description below for PCBWay. Thank you so much PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. And that's it. It's that simple to create a keychain from any picture you want using the Bamboo Maker Lab. If you don't have an AMS or multicolor printer or even a Bamboo Lab printer, you can still do this, just print it in a single color. It still can make some really cool keychains. If you have another printer with a different style, uh, multicolor system, you can do this as well. Just download it as the STL or, or 3MF if your slicer allows it and use your printer with your colors and it will come out just as good. It's super cool that you can use this pretty much across any printer out there and there's multiple different ways to do it. But I love that Bamboo Lab made this really cool module to give us you know, keychains and bookmarks and stuff that's super easy to use. Another cool thing you can do with this instead of making keychains is you could not add a hole in it at all. So don't put a hole in it or a tab. Don't put the bookmark thing on it and just print it as it is. Then toss a magnet on the back and make some custom magnets. I love this option. That means you could do double stick tape, the, you know, the double stick magnet tape or just little magnets or anything you want. Just glue them onto the back of the print and stick them anywhere that's magnetized. You got a little kid with fridge. If you have a little kid and f you know a fridge, you could do letters or anything you want, pictures, that kind of thing. If you have a toolbox like I do, I love to do magnets on the side of my toolbox. So this is another great option to make custom magnets. And if, if you wanna just do like a sticky thing, throw some double stick tape on there. 
it's not the best to get off of stuff, but if you're just throwing it on something like my toolbox, like I mentioned, it doesn't really matter. It's another super cool option for this tool. And I'm definitely gonna be making some magnets to give to Tristan, cause I know there's some things out there he would love to see on my fridge. <laughs> So let me know in the comments below what you're gonna make with this tool because I absolutely love it. If it's a bookmark or a magnet or even a keychain, let me know. There is a ton of options and I know I'm gonna make a whole set of these for my fridge. I'm actually gonna put magnets on the back of them. We love this show. If you know what this is, let me know in the comments below. But we love this show and, and for personal use, I found some sweet fan art to use for this. And you know, I'm not saying go out and sell copyrighted stuff. Uh, but for personal use, this is pretty sweet. So if you know that show, let me know in the comments below. And if you like the video, hit that thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos on 3D printing, lasers, and CNC's, I got CNC stuff coming soon, hit that subscribe button. And as always, check out this video right here if you haven't seen how to take any picture and turn it into a statue. That's right, a statue.